Today we're going over exactly how you can get your void touched items, and you're going to be able to get this without killing Kelris. Hello everyone, it's Gladius. Let's face it, Kelris is going to be the pug killer, and we're all not going to be able to kill Kelris every time we go into BFD, unless you're going in a guild group or whatever. So we're going to start at the beginning, go through the entire quest line on how to get the void touched gloves. You can get them pretty quick. And I got special tips for you hunters that might have a lockout that doesn't have Kelris cleared. This is going to unlock two things for you. First of all, you'll be able to get your void touched items awesome, but also you get a pretty sweet gold farm as well. And I'll show you how to go into that. Now make sure before starting this that you have a profession, a crafting profession that's over level 100. You won't be able to walk through this without having a level 100 crafting profession. All right, so first thing we want to do is we want to get this coalesced elixir of regret. This is going to be on the auction house. It's going to be a little bit expensive. I picked up mine for about four gold. Next, we want to head over to the Zorm Strand. We're going to be looking for this Torin. You'll go through some dialogue options, and then eventually he's going to point you towards the raid. If you've cleared out past Gamora, you're going to be able to walk on over and then just interact with the corpse of the Threshedon that's right next to the boss. You're going to get something called a handful of scales. And then we're back out of the instance. We're heading over to Ratchet. We're going to interact with this NPC here in the inn. You're going to go through some dialogue options and then have a quest. You're going to need these items to be able to complete this quest. This is around 10 gold for me, but you also have to pay five gold in just a, a fee to this NPC as well. So it's going to be about 15 gold. It really depends on your auction house. So I can't give any hard prices, but just know it'll get less expensive the later you watch this. After we turn in this quest, we're heading back into the raid again, and we're looking at the spot that's right before you go up to fight Kelris. This is what I was talking about before. If you did not clear Kelris, no worries. You can actually get through one of these pulls and then go into the water where you can fight all of the Threshadons and crabs to be able to skin the Threshadons to get some extra leather and also loot these clams all around here to maybe get an iridescent pearl. The first pull is a little bit tricky. You're going to be looking for the Hydromancer, Lore Master, and the Water Guardian. You're going to want to kill that Water Guardian immediately because it's going to get a buff. I opened with a multi-shot, ran down the hallway with Cheetah to get some distance, and then the Water Guardian is going to catch you first because it's not a caster. You just want to burst that thing down as fast as you can. You can then have your pet pick up aggro on the other two mobs, and it can tank the damage, but you really got to burn that Hydromancer as quick as you can and then turn to the Lore Master. Just so you know, if you do need to die and respawn when you come back, it'll be easier if you at least take out the Hydromancer. If your pet's not super tanky or can't handle the damage, you can also tank one on you for a little bit. Just have your pet taunt off of you when it's getting sketchy. All in all, these guys have a pretty low health pool compared to the hunter damage, and my gear is not that fantastic. I actually don't have any raid drops when I filmed this right here. Next, after you kill them, skip that pull on the right. You're going to jump right into the water. I do suggest dismissing your pet so you can get into the water without pulling everything else. Pet pathing gets weird when you jump over ledges. Now, here's something to consider. When you're swimming around down here, you don't want to get too close to where the mobs are. They can pull through the walls, so you don't want to flirt with danger here. Just make sure you're giving it a wide berth. So you're going to be going way under the water as you go under the bridge. Fight the Threshadons. Don't forget to come up for air. I think it was two or three Threshadons that I had to kill to get to the boss trying to get to the boss area where that boss Threshadon was tucked back into the cave. Go over there. The boss is gone. So you just want to clear the Threshadons le leading up to it and make sure you loot the clams for a chance of getting a pearl while you're down there. Definitely equip that talisman before you head into that cave because you're going to need it to be able to access this area and then just head to the back of the cave and you're going to be looting this box right here. The gold farm is optional, but if you want to, you can skin all those Threshadons and just loot those clams. Just keep in mind when you get to this area over here, there's a guy gazing down in the water. His pull range is really massive, and it's so nice of him. He'll bring his buddies over to throw you out of the instance. No need to hearth. Just keep in mind, you'll pull him if you go over there. Next, we got the box in hand. We want to head over to Tarin Mill. Tarin Mill or South Shore if you're on the Alliance. So head over Hillsbrad, go to Tarn Mill or South Shore, and you want to be going to this area on the map. It's going to be behind Ravenholt. You're going to be walking past, up past where Ravenholt is, hang a left, go up the mountains, and then eventually you're going to run into this crystal. The path to this thing's a little strange. Just check the footage behind me. And finally, once we get to the light crystal, we want to right click on the box, and then we're going to be able to break the box, and a shadowy figure is going to spawn behind us. There's going to be some dialogue options, but we have to 
pay attention here because there's gonna be an option at the end to either say we were not interested in learning the recipes or we have to say that we are interested in learning the recipes. So you, of course you wanna say yes, you learn the recipes that are relevant to, to your profession. So if you're a leather worker, you're gonna learn about the gauntlets and also the gloves. And the difference here is, is that one is for casters and then one is for physical damage, or also they work for the warlocks as well. It's just take a look for which one you wanna do and make sure you make the one you need. Check your best list. Because you only have one of these shards that you're gonna be able to use. If you use the shard in the wrong thing, I actually don't know what you do in that case. Maybe you can farm out another one, I'm not sure, but just make the one you, you know you need. Double check your best list. But it should be pretty obvious by the use ability that's on these gloves. I also have a beast mastery guide linked in the description below if you wanna check that out. If it's not there just yet, it's coming very soon. That's it, that's everything. Hunters, if you're still trying to figure out what pet to use for this and also for all other reasons, I have some videos linked in the description for a couple different pets you definitely need to know about in Season of Discovery and keep an eye on the future because they may get nerfed. But there will always be a pet we wanna use, so take a look in the description. I will update those links when we do have changes to pets or just subscribe to my channel if you want to stay tuned for all things related to Season of Discovery. If the video did help you out today, please heroic strike that like button. And if you want to stay tuned for more WoW content in the future, please bash the subscribe. I appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.